Welcome to episode 39 of the series and this could be the penultimate episode of the entire series. And in this episode we've got the final two games of our league season and I think it's time we give some of the lesser played players a bit of a run out as we rest a few people ahead of our Champions League final which will be in tomorrow's episode. <laughs> Welcome to the video, leave a like and subscribe to the channel please and there's basically not really anything to bring you since the last episode because the last episode was a Chelsea and PSG. In today's episode we've got Norwich at home, Norwich are ninth in the league and then we've got West Ham are 18th in the league away from home on the final two games of the season. Now neither of today's games really mean a great deal, that's why we're going to be playing a bit of a or a very rotated team. And that's mainly because I want to protect people ahead of the Champions League final, which is in three weeks' time. It's on the 31st of um, May in-game. So we might play a few more in the game against West Ham, but certainly in the game against Norwich, we will not be playing many of the big hitters. In terms of finances, we're £30 million in debt. You know about the transfer budget and the wage budget and all that. Dynamics is all looking absolutely wonderful. Let's get into today's first game of the episode and we'll click yes to opposition instructions as we always do. Now this is a team that will probably not be very familiar to you because it's not really one I go with very often but we do, we have rotated quite well that's why there's only really Fia Rotter who's their backup goalkeeper and Janelle Francis who if Kirk Franklin wasn't injured then Janelle Francis probably wouldn't be playing today anyway. But anyway we've got Fia Rotter in goal Nikolic at left back, Palau at right back, Jusic and Francis in the middle, Giardini and Ochong in the midfield, Bruce and Saka out wide with Galay in behind Oviedo. So let's get into the match. And, you know, obviously we want to win the game. We want to win every game we play. But this is really just a case of ensuring we don't play a big hitter's too often. Here's our guard of honour. I don't think I've ever shown a guard of honour from when we won the league before. So there's something new for you. Players come out, they won the league in the last episode, they lifted the trophy in the last episode and now we get the guard of honour from the Norwich players. Very hospitable for them. We are at home in front of our own fans. We can celebrate in front of our own fans as well. And yeah, it's just an opportunity for some of the players that don't get as much of a run out normally um, you know Jusic and Francis two of their youngsters in the centre of defence of course Palau who's Pataka's back up and here's Palau now gets a cross into the box and Alistair Bruce has scored this is the 11th goal of the season still gets a reasonable amount of goals even though he's a backup option we could be losing him in the summer you know I'm, I'm talking now if we don't win the Champions League of course Norwich in a 4-3-3 formation and it's really hard to not get sidetracked by the fact that we do have the Champions League final coming up because it's such a huge game. It's the game that determines what happens to this entire series. You know, obviously, if we lose the Champions League final, then we carry on the series. If we win it, the series ends. And Saka's been put through, and it's a good save from the Norwich goalkeeper. But we do get a corner from it, and it will be Saka to take the corner. He's going to whip the ball in to the near post and I think it was Alistair Bruce that got ahead to it but the goalkeeper saved it. Next highlights almost immediately is Palau to Saka back to Palau cross into the box towards Alistair Bruce but he's looped that header over the bar. And another reason as well why I like to play this team from time to time and why I really want to play it in, in an episode is just so you guys can see how good our backup options are because we do have really a really good squad of players. You know, we, we had a really good squad when I came here. We've kept that squad in place, added to it as well, of course. Here's Bakayo Saka. He's hit that quite some way wide. I don't know what he was trying to do there. But, yeah, you know, to think that this is a squad that we've pretty much put together. You know, we've bought players, we've invested in the squad, we've got some youth in here as well and it is a really good mix you know Saka for example obviously Ochon giving the ball away there but Francis wins it back Saka provides a 
some experience with his age and how long he's been at the club. Alistair Bruce, his second goal of the game. Palau, who is well known for his assists. I know Pataka gets all the headlines because he plays more frequently. But Palau has now got... I mean, basically, what we've seen there, Palau to Bruce is the usual Pataka to Van Persie. And Bruce has just completed his hat trick, but I think it's going to be disallowed. The referee's got his finger in his ear hole. VAR are going to have a look at it. They've given it. He has got a hat trick, a first half hat trick for Alistair Bruce. And that is great stuff for him. And oh, one of them seemed demotivated. I'm not sure why. But yeah, Jusic getting the assists on that occasion, not Palau. But yeah, the Palau to Bruce is basically the backup team's version of Pataka to Van Persie. And Norwich have not been anywhere near this game. They've not had a single shot at goal. We've had seven on target. Possession, we've, we're just edging possession. Oviedo with the corner. Proofs of an overhead back. I mean, it is confidence as well, up, isn't it? Well, I think we'll make a couple of substitutions. Mainly, I'm going to bring Oviedo off and bring Nick Jonas Schmetz on. And I think that's probably all, all we're going to do. I just wanted to give Schmetz a bit of a run out. But yeah, I think that's probably the only substitution we're going to make. I'm quite happy for this 11 to play the game. Um, I probably will play half of our first 11 in the next game against West Ham. And then the other half try and bring on to play, start with six, bring the other five on at half time. Just because I don't really want them to go three weeks without playing any football. So I think that could be counterproductive, really. But, yeah, that goes straight through, through to Fiorotta. I mean, we, we've got our three goals. We, we're pretty much in second gear here. We, we've not had to put in much of an effort, really. Here's Bakao Saka to Janelle Francis. Saka gets it back, tries to play Galay through. Saka wins it back again. And then Palau with the ball into the box... Or if it was going to be towards Bruce, but I think Schmetz got in there just in front of him. Here's Nikolic now to Bruce. Gives it back to Nikolic, to Giardini, to Bruce. Back to Giardini. Madding Ochon, Saka to Palau. I mean, we just, even our backup team just moves the ball about so beautifully. It's such good football to watch, it really is. And this Arsenal team has been awesome and we deserve to win the Champions League this year. We really do. And hopefully we can achieve that. It's probably going to be the last highlight of the game. We're about 10 seconds away from the game ending. Norwich have the highlight. It'd be a shame if they score here and ruin our clean sheet. But it looks like they're going to. No, they're not. Bit of a weak shot there in the end. And that is it. It's 3-0 and Alistair Bruce hat-trick. And yeah, we are obviously top of the table with nine points ahead of Tottenham, they beat Nottingham Forest today. If you look at the relegation, I mean, West Ham, they are actually relegated. They can't survive. They've been relegated for a little while. So they've got nothing to play for in the game against us in a week's time. So I think what we do is just make sure nobody is injured. We'll give Palau all the praise that he deserves. Vogel wants an improved deal for Jusic. For Jusic. And we've got a press conference to do. I'll do that off camera and I'll see you for the game against West Ham. Okay, so we're here for the last game of the season against West Ham. As I said earlier, it means absolutely nothing to either team. They're already relegated. We're already champions. One thing I did want to show you, actually, if we have a look at the competitions page, we have a little chat about set pieces because we don't really cover set pieces a great deal. And if we go into the team detailed on here, and we'll scroll down to goals from corners. Well, we're already on it, actually, because this is what I was looking at. Goals from corners. We've got 16 goals from corners this season. We're top of top of that table, I suppose you could say. Norwich a second with us. We, we've scored way more than any other team, really. If you look at Manchester City, who are our nearest and dearest in the league, we've scored six more goals from corners than what they have. If you do it as a percentage, you know, 16 goals from 100, uh, 16 corner goals from an overall of 119, it's probably a pretty low percentage. But, well, it's definitely a low percentage. But we, whenever, whatever team I'm with, whether it's with Arsenal, whether it's with Crystal Palace, Colchester, Avery, whether it's Blackburn in the Blackburn Rovers save, anything like that, 
we always do well at corners and you know obviously set pieces have been something newly introduced to the game this year and I do see some people being like to like other content creators saying how can you how are you so good at corners this that and the other and basically I'm just going to reiterate what a lot of other people have said all I do with my set pieces if we go into the tactic screen and click on set pieces it's always up as being a shared responsibility um, handles um, team set piece tactics is me handles team set piece tactic lists is always a set piece coach or if you haven't got a set piece coach someone that's best qualified for that and handles team set piece personnel lists again i leave that to the coach and then when we click on corners this is obviously different we're probably doing quite poorly at the moment because this has not been set up for my current tactic but if we go, oh, there you go. If we go to the attack, I always have three routines. One of them is always a near post in swinger. The other one is usually for this area of the pitch as well, also being an in swinger. And then we do a far post in swinger as well. Sometimes instead of doing this one, I might switch it to a short one or I might have the center, something like that. Or I might do a near post out swinger just to mix it up but this is usually how I set it up so that I'll set the set piece up that way and then I leave it to my set piece coach which is Victor Calderon and he decides who's going to be on all these different lists who's going to be standing at the near post in this case he's got Thiago Silva I personally wouldn't have chosen Thiago Silva he's 15 for jumping 11 for heading I don't think he's necessarily the right person for that I would have probably gone for one of my centre backs but it's working you know we are score we score more corners than anyone else and there's no reason to change it if we look at goals from indirect free kicks we're fourth on that one I don't I don't tend to pay any attention to indirect free kicks if I did I'm sure I could get that up and again goals from direct free kicks I mean the it's only Wolves that have scored more than one goal from a direct free kick which I've got to say I think maybe when they're doing the game, Sports Interactive maybe need to look at this because when you look at that, there's what, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eleven. There's only been eleven goals scored from a direct free kick in the entire season. And that seems a bit low, if you ask me. But let me know what you think in the comments. Do you get goals from direct free kicks? Do you pay much attention attention to your set pieces? Do you do it yourself, do you leave it to the coach? Let me know how you go about it. I'm interested to know. Right, let's get into the next game, the game against West Ham. There are changes. We have brought in some more of the more regular first team players. So we've got Fear Otter in goal, Nikolic left back, Pataka back in at right back, Jusic and Francis stay in the middle. Giardini is partnered with Thiago Silva, who's come back in. The attacking midfield three here is all our first team. It's Van Persie and Wanieri out wide with Mahara in behind Schmetz, who's in in place of Oviedo. Now, a Champions League final match is two weeks after this game. Now, I'm hoping that we don't go picking up a load of injuries in training and things like that, because what I tend to find is when you've got a Champions League final to play, you tend to pick up a load of injuries between the last game of the season and that that Champions League final. So hopefully that doesn't happen this year. West Ham has scored. We've brought in better players. We've got a better team out there. And West Ham has just scored in the fourth minute of the game. That's not ideal. Like I say, it's a good job. It doesn't really mean a great deal. But they've scored with their first shot on target. Kenta Mahara now has a free kick. We were just talking about direct free kicks. And there you go, he's missed. And, yeah, I, I, I just think that needs to be a little bit... I'm not saying it needs to be overpowered that you score 10 goals every season directly from free kicks. But to only have one all season long, considering the amount of free kicks we get as well, just seems a little bit low, if you ask me. And the fact that it's not just us, it is pretty much every other team. I think only Wolves can really say they've done themselves proud in that um, respect. Well, here's Nwanyeri... Ball goes over the bar from Schmetz. I have a feeling we're going to lose this game. 
It's just got that kind of vibe written all over it. And um, it is what it is. I mean, it's not ideal. You don't want to lose a game against a team that's already been relegated as your last game before the biggest game of the season, the biggest game of the entire save. And in actual fact, I'm going to point the finger and I'm going to say, come on, lads, show a bit of desire out there because that wasn't good enough. You know, we can't rest on our laurels. We can't, we can't just say, oh, it don't matter, you know, even though that is what I said, but, you know. Right, I'm going to make a few changes after they've taken their free kick. Oh, there you go. Well, West Ham have just scored from a direct free kick. I should have known that something was going to happen with direct free kicks, considering the fact that I mentioned it before the game. They've now gone two now up. That Appiah has suddenly turned into the greatest striker or the greatest player in the history of the game. Right, Schmitz can come off as well for Oviedo. And I think Janelle Francis can come off for Kayunda. And let's see if we can at least try and get Ago. I mean, in terms of the stats, it's pretty even. But they've just been pretty clinical in taking their chances, quite honestly. Well, I make another couple of substitutions. We're bringing Bruno Silva for Giardini. Uh, Fiorot's not had a particularly good game, has he? And we're bringing Escalada for Dusik, just so we get some first teamers on the pitch for 20 minutes, 30 minutes worth of action. And yeah, this has been disappointing, I have to say. A 2 0 defeat at the moment to West Ham. There, there's a thing for you as well. Don't talk about something because if you do, it'll come back to bite you, like with me talking about direct free kicks. Five minutes of added on time. We're literally we're doing nothing. This has been so poor. Maybe it was last day of the season vibes or something like that. We, we, we'll put it down to that rather than the fact that we're a bad team because we know we're not a bad team. And just make sure we've got no big injuries, which we haven't. We've just had £36 million come in. If we look at the finances... We're now 15.3 million in the red. Like I say, once we got to the end of the season and all the new money comes in, that will all be resolved pretty comfortably. We'll quickly do the press conference. You know what I do with these. I just whiz my way through it. I should really just set it to my assistant, but I just have this weird little feeling that, to me, it's going to matter and make a difference, but often it doesn't. Right, that's the end of today's episode, folks. Thank you very much for watching. Please leave a like on the video. Subscribe to the channel and I'll see you tomorrow for the Champions League final against their North London rivals, Tottenham.